My name is Dr. Paul Fedak. I'm a cardiac surgeon and a scientist, and I'm the director of translational research here at the Northwestern Bicuspid Aortic Valve Disease Program. My specialty, um, I do a fair bit of general cardiac surgery, but my practice is growing in valves um, by the day. I have a research interest in bicuspid aortic valve disease, so I'm always happy to operate on patients with bicuspid aortic valves so I can better understand their disease and, and help those specific patients. I became interested in cardiac surgery actually after I was accepted to medical school. I saw patients who couldn't walk across their hospital room and they would go into surgery, have a three or four hour valve surgery, and a week later they were running and breathing normally and had their life back. And to me that was a very captivating experience to see how the cardiac surgeons could really turn these patients around symptomatically. A bicuspid aortic valve has two flaps instead of three. So typically a patient would be born with a tricuspid valve, meaning they have three flaps that make up their aortic valve. If you're born with a bicuspid aortic valve, it can tend to wear out over time. So we see patients typically in their 40s or 50s who maybe come in with a leaky heart valve uh, or a stenotic heart valve, meaning that the valve starts to become calcified and less pliable and thickened, and then it pr prevents blood from easily uh, leaving the heart the flow through the valve is abnormal. So if you pictured a faucet and water coming out of your faucet, it comes out in what we call laminar flow. It comes out kind of straight in an organized fashion. But even if you were to take your finger and just put it slightly into the stream, what would happen? You'd have chaos. There's water splashed everywhere. It's the same thing with a bicuspid aortic valve. So your aortic root is specially designed so you have nice, clear laminar flow through it. With two flaps instead of three, there's always a little bit of obstruction to the flow. That chaos results in stress and strain in the aortic wall, which may result in a patient's aorta enlarging over time. And here at Northwestern, we're doing some studies where we're taking 4D MRI technology, where we can actually look into you and see where those stresses and strains are um, during the cardiac cycle, and how we can best treat those patients before a catastrophic complication occurs these patients should be closely monitored. And the more specialized the center, such as the Center for Bicuspid Aortic Valve Disease that we have here at Northwestern, where you assemble a group of experts who can really follow you and give you best, the best possible patient care and monitor you for these complications, the better. And the last thing I would suggest is please participate in research. There's a lot of questions that we have about bicuspid aortic valve disease. Not only will you help yourself by participating in research programs like ours, uh, but you'll help other patients with bicuspid aortic valve disease. There's a lot to learn, and um, if you participate in research, you'll help yourself and others in the future.